Forsythia flowers are my favorite sign that spring has arrived. Here where I live in New Jersey, the flowers of the Forsythia shrub pop up every year around mid to late March, and they create an explosion of yellow everywhere you look. And even though I had always loved these flowers as a sign of springtime hope, I came to love them even more after my mother died 11 years ago on the first day of spring. The homilist at her funeral told my family and me that every year we should think of my mother when we saw the forsythia starting to bloom and we should know that those flowers were a sign of the new life that she now enjoys and will enjoy forever with God. So while the blooms are in season, I often take a branch from the shrub and keep it in a jar or vase with some water. And those little flowers do a good job of reminding me of resurrection promise. This past spring, I think I clipped a branch from the shrub later in the season than I usually do because I had something happen that for me was a forsythia first. One morning in April, I was amazed to see that there were green leaves sprouting from the branch of yellow flowers sitting in the jar of water in my living room. The leaves were just like the ones that were starting to show up on the shrubs outside. The flowers on the branch were starting to wither and fall off. And I had figured that this would be the end of the message of hope that this branch would be preaching to me from my living room this year. But instead, those new and tender green leaves reminded me that even as suffering and death and all kinds of loss push into our world, still life insists. Life insists because God insists. Even with all of the pain of the past year, even with the injury added to wounds of injustice and division, even with isolation and anxiety and sickness and death, God insists that the last word will be life. I think of that for Scythia branch when I pray with today's readings. In the first reading, Ezekiel tells of a God who will bring renewal and strength from a young branch that God will tear from the top of the mighty cedar tree. God will plant this branch and it will be the beginning of a new tree, a tree that will flourish and give a home to all kinds of birds so that everyone will know that the God of Israel makes small things great and great things small. Now, through this image, Ezekiel is really talking about God raising up a new king for 6th century BC Jerusalem. Even though the sins of the people have brought the people very low, God will bring a new day of promise. The tree that will grow from the tender shoot is the new king that God will raise up, a king who will rebuild the defeated house of David. The God of Israel will do this, the God who is faithful and patient with the missteps of humanity. In today's gospel, the mustard seed that Jesus speaks of also gives a message about God's patience and promise. The mustard seed is tiny, but like the cedar branch, it too can grow into something so big that according to Jesus, 
birds of the sky can find shade in it. In reality, it's unlikely that birds would build a nest in a mustard plant. But the reach of the mustard plant does indeed stretch far and wide, all from a tiny seed. Wild mustard is nothing if not invasive. So when Jesus compares the potential of the tiny seed to the potential of God's reign, he's calling us to know the expansiveness and invasiveness of God's plan for good. And he's calling us to know we have a role in making the reign of God happen. God's reign is where no one goes without. It's where there's love, where there's peace. God's reign is where right relationship is the only kind of relationship. We're not there yet, but in God's design, our mustard seed steps to get there all have value. Life insists because God insists. Yes, it is painful when we look at the amount of need in our world and know that most of us can only fill a tiny part of that need. But since we know that each person has untold worth in the eyes of God, we trust that whatever we do to help even one person does have value and does help to, visit, to build God's reign. So people of God, keep building. All of our efforts mean something. Ultimately, God is the one who will grow life ever so patiently from tiny seeds and little branches. So plant the seed, welcome the green leaves, pray thy kingdom come, and know that your prayer will be answered. Life insists because God insists.